In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple wicking hydroponic system. It's perfect for growing all kinds of different root vegetables. I've been really wanting to grow more radishes lately, and I grew one in my ebb and flow system in a starter plug, and well, you can see how that worked out. That radish didn't really come out looking like a prize winner, but I think in this simple wicking system, they're gonna do really well. Let's go ahead and get started. The components for this wicking system are really basic. It's just two five gallon totes that I bought at Lowe's and I've got some quarter inch wicking material. I'll probably cut, I don't know, six or eight pieces of the wicking material just to make sure that I've got enough nutrient flowing up into the top bucket. Inside the top tote, I'm gonna to put a bottom liner of hydroton or expanded clay that'll kind of act as a filter because above it I'm going to fill the rest of the tote with a mixture of vermiculite and perlite. I think it'll be really easy for the radishes or maybe even carrots to grow and not be restricted in their growth but who knows we'll see how that works. Looking at the tote flipped upside down I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole here, 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 and here. That'll give me eight wicking cords coming up into the system. Hopefully that's enough. So you're supposed to burn the ends of these wicking cords so they don't fray. I don't have a lighter out here, but we'll make do. So since the wicking material is a quarter inch in diameter, I'm going to use a 15 64 drill bit. It's just a hair smaller than a quarter inch. So hopefully what that'll do is kind of friction fit the wicking cord. <laughs> So what I've got now is just eight holes drilled that I'm going to push the wicking cord through and hopefully it works. If not, I've got eight drain holes. Yeah, so that is a pretty decent fit. The way that these wicking cords work is the inside of this cord is actually an absorptive material like cotton. The outside of it is something that's less absorptive like nylon. So what happens is water wicks into this end of the cord, travels all down the cord and comes out this end. The majority of the moisture is transferred just like it's in a flexible fabric pipe. So the length that I'm making these is roughly the same length as if both of these buckets were stacked on top of each other. Now that I've got all the wicks in place, I'm gonna go through on these lower channels and drill some small drain holes. Because what I want to happen is if these wicks are pulling too much moisture up into the system, I want it to be able to drain back down into the nutrient reservoir. <laughs> I've just drilled a bunch of small holes all around the bottom of this top tote so that if it does start to take on a lot of moisture, it'll drain back down into the nutrient reservoir. While we're on the subject of these wicking hydroponic systems, if you've ever built one of these systems before, let me know in the comments how you did it. I went ahead and made a mark all the way around the inside of this lid where I want to cut. I'm just going to cut that section of the lid out using a razor blade and it's going to take, you know, three or four shallow passes to cut this lid out, but it's actually really easy to do. Perlite and vermiculite dust is bad for your lungs, so it's a good idea to wear some kind of a dust mask. Here I'm making a 60-40 mix of perlite vermiculite, 60% perlite, 40% vermiculite. Vermiculite has much better water holding capabilities than perlite, and I don't want the wick system to be oversaturated with water. Now that the mix is ready, I'm going to rinse it out really well to get rid of the dust and kind of pre-soak the vermiculite. 
Here I'm flipping the wicking cords up over the top edge or the bucket, and I'm gonna put the lid on it just to hold the cords in place while I add media so they don't get knocked down and covered up. Next, I'll go ahead and add that bottom layer of hydroton that, that's gonna act as a filter. Then I'm gonna start putting in the perlite vermiculite mix. And as I add that mix, I'll try and move these wicks around so that they stay in position as I fill the toad up. To keep the top of the media dry, I'm gonna bury the wicks two to three inches below the surface, and that should help prevent things like algae growth. So I've already pretty much assembled the entire wick system because I didn't think that this aerator was gonna show up in time. So what I'm gonna do now is take this top back off and I'm gonna drill a couple of holes in the bottom reservoir for the aerator lines. I'm gonna use, I think it's a 25 64 drill bit. This drill bit is the same outside diameter as this quarter inch top hat grommet. And these grommets are really useful because this 3 16 airline just slides right in it and it'll keep water from splashing out the sides. These little check valves that come with the aerator are super useful. What this does is it allows air to go one way, but it doesn't allow air or moisture to go the other direction. So you can see how the valve inside of it kind of tapers to a point. You want that point pointed towards your air stones. Another way that you can check is by actually blowing through. If you can blow through, then the part that your mouth is touching needs to be the part facing the aerator. So just make sure that you connect these in the right direction. Once you have the check valves connected to your airline, go ahead and connect your airline to the aerator. And this is just a super cheap Unic Life UL40. I've got a bunch of these pumps. They don't put out a ton of air. I think they cycle about four liters a minute, which is not great for larger tanks, but for this small five gallon tote that has only got like two and a half gallons of water in it, it'll be perfect. So now that we've got the aerator set up and I know that it works, I'm gonna go ahead and mix a weak nutrient solution and then we'll plant some radish seeds and see what happens. This is totally up to you, but I am a big fan of pre-soaking seeds before I plant them. So hopefully this will help give these seeds the best chance to germinate. I'm gonna plant these about half an inch deep and to make just kind of a little gauge for half inch, I just cut a notch on this permanent marker to so stick the permanent marker down in the perlite so that I know I'm around half an inch. I didn't have a humidity dome big enough to fit on top of this tote, so all I did was just cover it in plastic wrap to raise the humidity level. Four or five days after planting, little baby radishes started popping up out of that perlite vermiculite mix. Within about 10 days, I was ready to start thinning the plants out. I used tweezers in this clip, but this perlite vermiculite mix is so loose that it may be better just to pinch off the plants that you wanna thin so you don't damage the healthy plant that you wanna keep. As part of this project, I'm testing one of the cheapest LED grow lights you can buy on Amazon. I'll do an update video in a couple weeks to let you know how the light performs, and I'll also give you an update on how the radishes are doing. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel. If you've got questions, ask them in the comments. That's all I've got, so I'll see you next time.